This video is for all of you certified Google Ads nerds like me who want a repeatable and reliable way in which they can scale their Google Ads accounts. And what we'll be focusing on in this video is I'm gonna be taking you through the process of splitting out your Google Ads campaigns into separate Google Ads campaigns. Now the whole purpose of doing this is so that you can better control your budgets so that you can focus more spending on the areas of your account that are performing well and limit spending in areas that are not performing so well. And in this video, I'm gonna be taking you through the four reasons for why you should split your Google Ads campaigns. Now, what I wanna be really, really clear with is that more Google Ads campaigns does not mean, and I wanna repeat, does not mean that you will get better results in Google Ads. Because unfortunately, a very common mistake that I see when I review Google Ads accounts is that I see people just have too many campaigns for no reason at all. Because what you need to understand with your Google Ads campaigns is that every single single campaign you have in your Google Ads account, you need to have a very clear reason for why you have that campaign. A good way of thinking of it is that the ultimate goal is to only have one Google Ads campaign. And if you consider that as your starting point, you then have to justify why you're adding in extra Google Ads campaigns. Now, there are some very clear reasons and benefits for why you add in extra Google Ads campaigns, but I just wanna make it really, really clear that just by adding in extra Google Ads campaigns does not mean that you're gonna get more success. You have to have a very clear reason and a strategy for adding in extra Google Ads campaigns because one of the downsides of adding in extra Google Ads campaigns is that it does mean that you've got more optimizations and there are some other considerations that you need to take into account. So with all that said, let's go into those four reasons or justifications of why you would break out and add in extra Google Ads campaigns. But just before we get into those four points and we get deep into our teaching, if we haven't met yet, my name is Aaron Young and I'm from the Define Digital Academy. Me. And this is where I share all of my profitable strategies and learnings that I've learned in Google Ads since I started managing my first Google Ads campaigns in 2010. And especially if you're new here and to help you further, if you'd like to get access to my Google Ads optimization checklists, you can just follow that link in the description below. And these are a great tool which lets you know not only all of the individual optimization actions that you need to complete, but it also lets you know when you need to complete these actions. And if you follow that link in the description below, you will see that I've got these optimization checklists for search campaigns and also for e-commerce based campaigns. So just follow that link in the description below to get the best checklist for your needs. Now let's start for the first reason for why you would split out extra Google Ads campaigns. And the first reason is, is that you want better location targeting. And this is especially true if you are running an account that is targeting multiple countries, it makes a lot of sense to set up separate companies based on the country or if you wanted to group similar countries together. A perfect example of this would be if you're an e-commerce brand and you're marketing your products to the USA and also the Australian market. And one of the core differences between those two markets is because they're based in the Northern and Southern hemispheres, they have the opposite seasons in place. So when you're marketing your winter products to the American market, you're gonna be marketing your summer products to the Australian market. So that's one of the reasons for why you'd wanna break out some separate campaigns because you've got some different location-based factors that you need to take into account. Or even another example is if you're a service-based business and you run a franchise model or different locations and you may have certain marketing budgets for different cities. And that's also another reason for why you would run different location-based campaigns because that way you can tailor your budgets for campaigns that you're running in Brisbane versus other campaigns that you're running in another Australian city like Sydney. So the first reason for why you'd have different campaigns is so that you can base your spending and even some other optimizations around bidding and keyword focus around those different locations. One of those reasons I mentioned there is keyword focus and a classic example of this is that even if both countries speak English, the meanings of words can be very, very different. Funny example of this is that if you were to do a search for a men's thong in Australia, that would produce some very, very different results if you were to do that same search of a men's thong in the American market. With the American market meaning that you're looking for some racy men's underwear versus for the Australian market where you're looking for some casual beach footwear. So I think now you get the picture of why there are some really valid reasons and benefits 
for your overall success for breaking out your Google Ads campaigns based on locations. And the second reason for why you would add in or break out your campaigns is that you wanna be able to better target different networks or audiences. Now, many of you would know that with Performance Max, that's one campaign which goes to all of Google Ads networks. So search, shopping, display, YouTube, map, and all of its other networks. But the problem with Performance Max campaigns is that you can't stipulate what amount of budget gets spent where. So if you've got some video ads and some image ads and you want a certain amount of money spent on those networks, you need to set up separate YouTube or display campaigns. Plus on top of that, if you wanted to market to particular audiences, so you wanted to run some remarketing campaigns, so retargeting people with image-based ads once they've gone to your website, or there's some individual websites or YouTube channels that you wanna target with video or image-based ads, that needs to be run in targeted display or video campaigns. So firstly, you'd break it out by location. The second reason is, is because you wanna target different audiences or networks. The third reason for why you would break out separate campaigns is if you wanna be able to separate different product categories or search themes based on their profit margins. And this one really comes down to your own business knowledge or if you're an agency or running ads for your client, the knowledge that you have of their business. So if the business has some different cost of goods sold, so let's just say there's an e-commerce brand, it's got one range of product which have a really high profit margin, which is above say 75%. And then they have another range of products which may have a really low profit margin of about 20 or 30%. It would then make a lot of sense to separate those products into different campaigns because your acquisition goals are gonna be really, really different between those two types of products. Or if you're a service-based industry and you have some really expensive but high product services, and then you have another range of products which may have a lower cost, but they may have a higher volume, you would also wanna separate those services out into different campaigns. Once again, so that you can better control the budgets and also the bidding because your acquisition costs are gonna be very, very different. So by separating them out into separate campaigns, it allows you to better control the outcomes and it also allows you to better review those campaigns. Say for example, you might have one campaign where you're happy to pay up to $500 per conversion because the conversion value and profit margin is so high, but for another group of products or services, you may need that acquisition cost below $5. So you can see why when you look at their profit margins, it makes sense to sometimes have different products and different services in different campaigns. Another example I wanna give here is that if you are selling other people's products, you may wanna break your products into different suppliers. So a great example I had of this was that we were doing an audit of an account and they had four main suppliers. And what their issue was is that it felt like every quarter the suppliers were changing their pricing, which would then swap around which supplier was more profitable for this business. So what we did is we put a structure in place where their campaigns were built around their supplier relationships. What this allowed them to do is to increase the budget to the suppliers who are currently giving them the best priced products and then decrease the budgets for the suppliers where their products are more expensive so the margins which is too thin. Now there's a whole heap of different examples that we could give here but I think you've got the concept that another reason for why you would split out separate campaigns comes back to profit margins and the different costs of different products and services. And then this then brings us to our fourth reason why you would have separate campaigns and it all comes down to the actual performance of the keyword themes or the products. Now I hope you've seen that through all of these four points, what you're really wanting to do here is you're wanting to break out different campaigns so that you've got better control over your budgets and your individual optimizations. And this becomes especially true when we talk about breaking out campaigns based on product or search theme performance. Because what will happen if you're running a search or shopping campaign, running an automated bidding strategy like maximize conversions or maximize conversion value, or if you're running a performance max campaign, it's really, really common that you will see Google spend about 70 to 80% of the budget on one or two search themes or one or two products, and you'll have other products or other search themes which they may be converting, but they're just not getting any spend at all. And that's a perfect opportunity to break out those low spending products or services into their separate Google Ads campaigns so that you're manually forcing Google to spend more on those products. So what I'm gonna do right now is let's jump into a screen share. I wanna visually show you how you can categorize 
four different products or services. So what we're looking at here is that we've got four different categories of products or services. Along the bottom axis here, we have the ad spend. So this is the ad spend being high. Back here is the ad spend being low. And then with the conversions, we've got low conversions in this quadrant and high conversions up here. So a simple way to remember this is that you have four different categories of products or services. There's firstly our hero products or services. And these are your products and services which have a high spend and also a high amount of conversions. Then you have what we call our sidekick products or services. They've got a high level of conversions, but they've got a low spend. So what you wanna do between these two products is obviously for our hero products, we wanna to continue to spend more and more on these because the more we're spending, the more conversions we're getting. But what we wanna do with these sidekick products is that we wanna run some tests because they're getting a low spend, but they're getting high conversions. What we wanna see is that if we break them out into a separate campaign and we go from say spending $100 a day, if we spend $200 a day, do they still get the same amount of conversions? And then we have our zombie products and these are the products which we just don't know. They've got a low spend and a low conversion. So we don't know whether they will convert because Google isn't sending any traffic to them. So that is another example of why you would break these products or services out into their own campaign so we can force Google to spend more money on those products or services. Remembering that by breaking them out into another campaign, we've got control of the budget over a campaign level so we're forcing Google to spend money on these products. And what we're really doing with these zombie products or services is we wanna find out, are these gonna be sidekick products or are they gonna be hero products or are they gonna be this fourth category of products which we wanna avoid, which is our villain products. These are the products which have a high spend but low conversions. Now with these, you've got two options. You can exclude them or close them down or you can move them into a separate campaign so that you can continue to run your optimizations to see if you can get them to convert. So they're the four reasons for why you would break out different Google Ads campaigns. Remembering that more campaigns does not mean more success with Google Ads. So I want you to really go through and have a look at your account and really start to question, you know, do you need all of these campaigns or do you have some of those sidekick or zombie products that you wanna run a test to see what happens if you give them more spending. Thank you for joining me. It's been an absolute pleasure having you here. Remember that if you wanna get access to my Google Ads optimization checklists, all you need to do is to follow that link in the description below. And if you're a service-based business and wanna know the exact strategies that I'm using for my service-based campaigns in 2024, I want you to go through and watch this video right here. Or for my e-commerce owners out there, if you wanna see the e-commerce strategies that are working in 2024, go through and watch this video right here. See you next time.